Before we begin, let me start by saying, this is it, the beginning of the end. The stars of our movie today are, guess who's back? But does anyone else really matter? Pew! Our story begins with, do I really have to say it again? Some scrolling backstory takes less know what the f we're looking at. Our story really begins with this Easter peep taking this thing called a Sith Wayfinder. Well, what is that, Leia? So glad you asked, Jeb. It's this thing you can find in any J.J. Abrams ass that helps you find your way ha, to the Sith retirement home where you can find the creeper who's your girlfriend's granddad who also conceived your granddad without even using a pecker. Gross. Ah, oh, shit, I'm already confused. But all that's true, you can fact check it. And after he gets to the planet, he finds Palpatine and he's like, Are you an assassin? You're an errand boy. And he tells Kylo that all that time he thought he was hearing the strange voice and Snoke and Vader, it was really just his crusty old ass. So not only is Palpatine the big kahuna of the Sith, but he's also a ventriloquist? Get the f out of town! So Poopatine has made thousands of ships equipped with advanced technology, state-of-the-art, innovative, big boom-boom weapons that can destroy millions of lives. Think of him as the Star Wars rendition of Steve Jobs. And what does he tell Kylo he gotta do? Oh, just kill your girlfriend. So Finn and the bros are getting intel from this alien named Bulio. And if he married Glenn, his name would be Bulio Gulio. That's funny. Oh, so now she thinks she's the f***ing Avatar. What other f***ing Jedi did you see levitating? Even Yoda had a damn hover round. And Ray's like, I can't connect with a dead Jedi. They call you. You don't call them. They just don't want to talk to your ass. And she actually says, I'm just not feeling myself. And Leia just look at her like, Okay, don't go get too excited. This movie's only rated PG-13. And Ray says, I will earn your brother's saber. One day. Oh, I see. You put a f***ing band-aid on it after you and Kylo f***ed it up. You kids don't have respect for sh**. So you remember them books that got set on fire? <laughs> Yoda's like, troll them I did. Because when you live for eternity in the force, you get bored and just start f***ing with people. So everything I just told you about the peck of free poopatine and the Sith way, they know all that sh**. Moving on. Oh, except this part right here. Leia's like, oh my dad, I mean, I never saw the guy. Luke fought that fight and told me he looked like a f***ing California raisin. I was off doing the nasty with Han, but he sounded f***ing creepy to me. So all the bros journey off onto their bro venture, while Kylo repairs that thing he uses to cover his smurf abuse scars, and Bulio, no! How could you kill Bulio, Gulio, you sick bastards? Then Kylo knock on Ray's false door, and when she opens it, he's like, Hi, it's me, Stan. And he proceeds to tell her his master plan to develop, manufacture, and get rich off of selling Ace Boney. Who could it be? Can't you see? It's Billy D. Don't faint, mama. God, I can still smell the Colt 45 like it was yesterday. And Lando's like, give Leia my love. And Ray says, you should give it to her yourself. Then Lando just sit there like, I thought this movie's only rated PG-13. Say he's been carrying the torch for me all these years, huh? It's a big torch. I don't know how to tell him I'm every bit the bombshell I was back in the day. And there's a long chase. Skip. They fall into this gravelly belly button in the planet that looks an awful lot like Twitter tween. And wouldn't you know it, they find a dagger with a hint written in parcel tongue that tells you where you can find that compass that doesn't point north. Then they get confronted by a basilisk, which she heals so you can know this kind of power is possible. And you'll understand it later in the movie when Kylo saves her. And wouldn't you know it, his big slithery ass was right in the way of the exit. Oh sh**, Chewie finally gonna do it. Looking for that cliff. But there ain't no water here, so you just hear a little splat. Jeb, Chewie didn't do that. But he did get captured because Ray was too focused on that ass. He's my son and I love him, but that's an ugly ass. What is the point of this scene? This is to show she has a propensity to use the dark side of the force just like a non-pecker using granddaddy. Don't worry, Chewie's not dead. They gonna milk it like it is, but he ain't dead. Gonna have a long conversation about Chewie being dead. Ha uh ha, -uh, Chewie's not dead. So to summarize, Three Beep Doe knows the inscription to find the way to the Wayfinder, but refuses to translate the Sith language. That is not, however, preventing them from showing him a map and having him point his 24 karat pinky finger to where the damn thing is. 
but that makes too much sense. So we're gonna continue to bastardize this legendary series by pretending to kill two beloved characters in a row. Oh, you have a little salty bitch today. And then they say, for Chewie, like they give a damn. Of course they give a damn, that was Ray's kind of dad's dog. So they get escorted by this reject from the Beetleborgs. Y'all know who the Beetleborgs are? They're the rejects from the Power Rangers. Imagine being a reject of the rejects of the Power Rangers, but here we are. And they got some Imperial Primo Lita badge or something that helps you get into Imperial sh**. And they get into some Imperial sh**. And let's not forget that Finn used to bust out the scrubbing bubbles whenever the troopers would have a little too much of that bad sloppy joe in the Imperial cafeteria and leave a sloppy poe in the Imperial toilet. Okay, so he's in the snow, she's on the ship, they both on my nerves. And remember soldiers for Hinkle? He's a spy for the rebels because he was salty about Kylo getting that promotion. That's it. And what I tell ya, she got a no pecker using granddaddy. And son, please put the mask back on. Don't nobody want to see that nasty shit. And they go to the moon in the Endor system where Ray stabs my bitchy, fugly emo son through the tent while I was distracting him with threats of a serious badonk beating. What? You didn't stab him through the tent? I sacrificed my glorious ass and you got him through the pancreas or whatever that was? And you got patch him right the back up. I'm back. I decided to get one more of those big fat paychecks, but then I'm getting the out for reals. So Kylo's dead, because after Ray stabbed him through the pancreas or whatever, she said she didn't want to kiss Kylo, she wanted to bang Ben. She's in love with a man who committed patricide. Patricide, the killing of one's father by stabbing him through the tit. And that's the actual definition, you can fact check it. And he throws his lightsaber out into the water, and then over here on whatever planet where Uncle Luke died, Ray throws her lightsaber, which is caught by Uncle Luke himself. Which I think is supposed to be a contrast to the Unky Luke from episode 7 where he once threw his lightsaber away but is now telling her not to throw away hers or some dumb sh** such as this. Okay, well, you showed him I'm died, so take my saber and Unky ship. And there's a long fight while Rey simultaneously battles her grandpappy who actually wants her to kill him so he can transfer his spirit into her body. Pervert! Gross! And the next part is just pew pews and boom booms and creepy granddads. We all have that one. And then my son runs in to say his favorite piece of ass and oh shit! And then some levels of stupidity I can't even begin to describe. Something about how they are yin and yang or butch and sundance or cheech and chong or dumb and dumber whose bond is so strong it has the ability to revitalize Captain Creepy Hands. Oh shit! And all the Jedi of the past say, Can't do it without us, can you, loser? Because apparently she's the Avatar who can channel the energy of all the past Avatars or some such ripped off nonsensical unoriginal bullshit. So Avatar State, yep, yep. Ain't you tired of lightning in your own face off because you ain't got the self-control to stop zapping people? And Cutler Beckett goes down with the ship. And Billy D has to save y'all's dumb ass. And they both deceased. Cute 17-year-old fangirl crying into popcorn over bitchy fugly emo child sacrificing self to save damaged woman in love with bitchy fugly emo child who committed patricide. Oh, it's so romantic. Gross. And just as she's all set up with rigor mortis, she comes back in time to kiss a homicidal maniac before he himself go rigor mortis. I just want to know what rebels had a weapon strong enough to split one of them bitches in half, and why didn't they use it before? And they're a party. And I don't know the point of this. I don't know if he meant, I could be your daddy. Or if he meant, I could be your daddy. Bro! Bros! Bros don't hold hands, they hug. And the three OGs are over here in their own little circle. Then Ray arrives on a titty, and she buries mine and Luke's lightsabers. I never lived on titty, so I don't fucking know why she buried my lightsaber on that godforsaken crust ball. But then some nobody comes up and asks her what her damn name is, and she says, Dawson. Rose Dawson. The end. I swear to Daddy Darth, if they make three more of these motherfuckers, I quit. Jeff, can I do the outro since this is my last hurrah? Go ahead. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe for your regular fix of math. You can expect Jeff to upload more videos probably a lot more now that he can do good movies like Twister. And on Jeff's behalf, I would like to thank these wonderful patrons who always give Jeb their bucks.
for Movies Explained for. I'm Jeb. And I'm Leia. Adaya. We are getting married, aren't we, Jeb? You're way hotter than that loser with that flat and the big tits that let our fucking fugly emo child stab him right through the fucking tit.